Hello, boils and puppets. Big Phil here with something a little different, something new, something a bit special in the light of recent events that may or may not have affected you. As some of you who come by to visit my channel are aware, my main playlist on this channel was Millennium War Aegis, the translated version that we could play off of Nataku.net. It was a fun game, I had a whole lot of fun playing it, I'm pretty sure most of you did as well. But yeah, as you are aware, Millennium War Aegis is gone from Nataku.net and we can't play the translated version of the game. I'm, I'm not sure what the situation was between the developers and Nataku.net, but all I know is that Millennium War Aegis is gone, the translated version. It was a very, very sad day for us boils and puppets, I'm not gonna lie. And the way I see it, we could do one of two things. One, we could go into our little corner of woe, get into the fetal position, and just cry our little hearts out. Or, we could just acknowledge the fact that we did have fun during the journey of Millennium Aegis when we did have the opportunity to play it. And I don't know about you, but I'm gonna be taking the latter. What I want to remember about Millennium War Aegis is not the fact that it had to end abruptly, no. What I want to remember about Millennium War Aegis was just a fun game that I enjoyed playing, that I'm pretty sure most of you enjoyed playing. So I wanted to do a little something special in which to remember the game by. And I said to myself, what better way to do this than to actually make Big Phil's personal list of top 15 Millennium War Aegis waifus. Ah yes, the waifus that made this trip so rememberable. The waifus who busted their ass on the battlefield to make my job a whole lot easier. The waifus who brought such great events for me to actually showcase on my channel. And as I said before, this is my personal list. My personal top 15 waifus on Millennial Aegis. And I'm sure it's going to be different from all of yours top 15. Because you see, what's going to influence mine are a couple of things. The personality of the waifus what kind of events they brought to Millennium War Aegis, how useful they were in a fight, and most importantly, who was in my harem to begin with. You look at this list, you probably notice that there's an extreme lack of waifus that you can get through premium summons. I'm not gonna lie, my luck was absolutely pathetic when it comes to the shrine summons, and it kind of deterred me from actually, you know, participating in the shrine summons all that much. So you see a whole lot of waifus that you get from quests, from events, all that other good stuff. I mean, I got a basic list of the waifus in Millennium War Aegis. And I know for a fact that there are some premium summon waifus that would have definitely made this list. It's just that, well, I didn't have the privilege of actually interacting with them, actually winning them in the shrine. Yeah, that's going to be the main thing that affects my list. I'm pretty sure most of you were extremely lucky in the shrine summons, and you got to get quality heroines from the shrine. So consider yourselves lucky if you were able to win those quality heroines from the shrine because I sure as hell wasn't. Now, with all that being said, let's get on the list, shall we? Now, before we begin, I just want to give a quick shout out to some of the honorable mentions. The white foods that are worth remembering, that are worth a good mention, but couldn't quite make the list. And that would be Soma for, you know, being the first waifu. I mean, you can never forget the first waifu, can ya, boyos? You definitely cannot. Then we also have Carrie, the Gold Lancer. I mean, she was very good at freaking holding the front line. She was very powerful, although she was a bit lackluster in the personality department. And then you have Marit, the Golden Pirate. I mean, I, I don't think I ever used her at all, but I will admit that she gave me the most memorable intro to a video that I ever had. I want to be strong like you. Oh, nature! No! 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 You do not bring that incest shit around me. I will loot a lolly. I will fluff a furry. I will fab a fuda. But I refuse to freaking get it on with freaking emotos. Ah, no. And you're a fucking pirate, too! What the fuck are you doing? You're me hearties. A vast only chan. You want to come pillage some booty with your emoto? Fucking what? Fucking why? Fucking why? Oh, the cringe was real, and I'm pretty sure each and every one of you enjoyed it to its fullest, didn't you, boils of puppets? <laughs> anyway, now that we got all that out of the way, let's move on to the main event. Boils of puppets, for your viewing pleasure, I, Big Bill, present to you... Big Bill's Top 15 Millennium War Aegis Waifu. Number 15, Elaine, 
Let me tell you, it was a tough choice as to who was going to take the number 15 spot above all the other honorable mentions. And the thing that won Elaine the spot was the fact that I have an extreme, an extreme weakness to the tsundere's, let me tell you. And Elaine, she came at us at full force right out of the gate with the tsundere. But I do it all to help the kingdom. It has nothing to do with you. Well! Well, okay, Elaine, good. I mean, you know, you're not very subtle about the tsundere part of you. I can see, I can already tell. <laughs> whatever, whatever. And that's Valkyrie with a nice personality and a little bit of sass to go along with it. Elaine is definitely worthy of the 15th spot on my list. Oh, if only my prince were better looking. Fuck you! Number 14. Chidas. Chidas, 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 however you say her name. The freaking platinum elf queen healer on my team. I mean, give or take, she is a fantastic healer, one of the best healers on my team. The only problem is that there's really not much outside of that, which is why she's freaking ranking so low on my list. It's a shame, though. She seemed, she had so much potential, but apparently uh, that potential wasn't reached. Even her freaking awakened art is the same as her non-awakened art, pretty much. Uh, but I will give a quick shout-out for being such a good healer, keeping my team alive as I'm doing battle with So pops to you for that one, Chidas. Pops to you. Number 13, Noel, the gold level dwarven bishop who was the heavy hitter of the team. During the later ends of each mission, whenever the situation got a bit too hectic, I would throw her down, and in turn she would throw down heavy splash damage to annihilate every enemy that comes across her. Though I will admit, though her damage output was awesome, she was a bit of a glass cannon. It's a <gasps> no! I didn't pay attention, God! Damn it! It didn't work! Ah! Oh, 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 here we And also once awakened, she gains a passive ability that gets us more gold per mission, so she was essential on the team for every mission I went on. And not to mention that heavy dwarven accent of hers, which caused me to devolve into speaking like Gimli during each and every one of her lines of dialogue. So yeah. Quite difficult to take an H scene seriously when you hear the voice of Gimli as you're doing it. But hey, that makes it all that much more entertaining, doesn't now, boyos? Number 12. Solano. Right from the summon beast from the earth, we got the little Sundere summoner who had an interesting fashion statement. And here she is. Here is the girl of the hour. And is she not wearing any pants? It's just... She... she uh, okay, okay, whatever, whatever. And seriously, what could be a better ability from a waifu than the ability to summon Balrog Chan to a little threesome? Wait, what? 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 What the hell is that? Solano? Solano? I love you, but what I can't put up with, what is really the relationship uh, breaker here, is you summoning the Balrog to come and kick my ass! I'm not gonna lie, the thing that got her on this list and so high up on the list is the fact that I had a whole lot of fun during her event. I mean, it was funny and it brought out my abilities as an editor. I had a good time with her event. It's just a shame that I kinda botched up the moment crystal farming. I mean, the last day I slept in and I missed the opportunity to get her on the in the harem because I didn't have enough MoMA crystals. That was a terrible feeling for me. I mean, she had so much potential and I boshed it up. It was my fault I couldn't get her in the harem. If I did have the opportunity to use her in battle or if I got to get to know her in the bonding section, then uh, my, she may have scored higher on the list, but unfortunately, I messed up, I mucked up, and I missed that opportunity. So here's to Solano, the waifu that got away. Number 11, Irene. Ah yes, the glasses wearing maid waifu from the Dark Guild Servant. I mean, she is a maid waifu. I mean, what more could you possibly ask for in a waifu? Well, how about an extremely sadistic side personality to go with that cute face of hers? Now, would you be so kind as to tell me the locations of the Guildmaster? I have nothing to tell you, girl. This is gonna be fun. Now you get to experience the Dark Guild's interrogation techniques firsthand. Uh, be gentle with him, and somewhere down the line, be gentle with me too, please. I hope you're ready, low-life traitor. How dare you betray the former Guildmaster? 
I mean, she looks good. She's a very committed waifu. I mean, there's not much else to say other than freaking rub her the one way and you'll be facing one hell of a bad time. I was able to ascertain the location of the Guildmaster. Really? How on earth did you manage that? <gasps> Help! Don't you dare say a word. I will destroy you. Oh my goodness! I mean... Hip, forgive me. Well then, shall we head out to the Guildmaster's hideout? Great design, fun event, and a personality that will leave you both feeling threatened and aroused, Irene is definitely worthy of the spot on this list. Stay away from me! I st I'm still recovering from that poison! I, I still have a bright future awaiting me! No, this is your end. Farewell! <laughs> ah, pop. Number 10. Chloe. Ah, the little moe, lolly, sadistic fallen angel from the fallen angel seal. Hey, you over there. Come play with me. I'm Chloe. I may not look like it, but I'm an angel. What should we play, hmm? Let's try a fight to the death. Oh, God! Oh, my goodness. What else can I say about that other than the fact that it was a very fun event and also a very easy event. A nice break from all the other events that I had to put so much effort into. And the thing is, after I did win her from the event, she became a valuable member of my harem. When I deployed her, she went up against the big bosses and was able to handle herself fully. It's a shame that with her being an angel and all, I can only utilize her for a couple seconds in each battle. Ah, uh, but what can you do? She was an angel, but she did work when I needed her to. So thanks for being so easy to get and also being such a... A deadly heroine on the battlefield. So don't ever change, you little cruel, sadistic lolly, you. Oh god, Chloe! Oh god, Chloe! Oh god, Chloe! Oh, it, it's such a fucking massacre! Ah. Number nine. Boys and puppets, I present to you Pippin! Or as I like to call her, the wife fool of a took. Ah, uh, Pippin, a little Kasune Feng Shui Master from the Feng Shui Master in the Crimson Cult. I mean, a Kasune Feng Shui Master whose Feng Shui is one big trash talker. Feng Shui has shown that you naturally have trouble with women, Prince. <laughs> Excuse me? And let's not forget that epic name choice of hers. Feng Shui Master Pip. So let me get this straight. We have a Kitsune. Very cute, very pretty, very sexy, and decide to uh, name her Pippin. Pippin! Fucking Pippin! Though name choices aside, I had a whole lot of fun during her event. I think she was the first event that I actually invested a whole lot of time in editing, and she really helped me branch out in my editing skills. And it's a shame that I realized her talent so late in my Millennial Aegis career. For those of you who don't know, Pippin's passive ability negates half of the damage that you will receive from environmental hazards. This makes her essential for most of the dailies in which, you know, you gotta fight through poisonous swamps. And on top of that, she heals two people at the same time. A fun event, a powerful healer, Questionable name choices. Don't ever change, Poppet. My little wife fool of a took. Don't ever change. Number eight. Bashira. The Platinum Archer Fox Girl? Neko? Whatever those animal ears are. Whatever, whatever. But I'm not really sure, but I think she was my very first Platinum unit that I ever had. And as such, for a very long time, she was a designated heavy hitter. And she stayed the heavy hitter throughout most of my Millennial Aegis career. Being a very powerful archer, she was deployed quickly, and she laid down massive damage for us. And said massive damage was also buffed from another waifu that may or may not be mentioned later in the list. A veteran to the team, she most definitely holds a special place in my heart, boyos. Number seven, Anya. Ah, the black level dragon. Everyone's favorite lolly white dragon. Sorry, Kana. 
for the most part in my Millennium Aegis career, she had a very mediocre role. I mean, I only used her when extreme tanking was necessary in a fight. Then I awakened her, and then I gave her the Spirit of the Joy, which got her up to level 90, and she quickly became one of the essential members of my team. She essentially had the aspects of both a heavy tank and a samurai, dishing out tons of damage to everybody who she blocked, as well as being able to take a whole lot of punishment herself. This made her essential as a rear line tank, able to intercept and solo some of the high end bosses that may come to the fight. An excellent tank, but as I said before, her role in my party came rather late, which means that there was somebody else who took up the tank and role until this happened. And who might that be? Well, if you must know who held the mantle of main tank for most of the Millennium War Aegis career, then all you have to do is join me for... Number 6. Bernice, the gold level heavy infantry. I caught her very early in my Millennium War Aegis career, and as such, she has the most time as the main tank. And by God, did she prove why she held the mantle of main tank time and time again. Whether it was swarms upon swarms of tiny enemies or big bosses, there was hardly anything that could get past Bernice's defense. And if there was, well, that would pretty much mean the end of my team, let me tell ya. So Bernice, I bestow upon you the mantle of the greatest tank in Millennium War Aegis. I, despite what everybody else says, don't ever change for me, Poppet. Don't ever change. Number 5. Iris. For every tank, for every damage dealer that we have on the team, there's got to be somebody that keeps them alive. And the person who did that the best on my team was Iris. Much like Bernice, I got her very early in my Millennium War Aegis career. Perhaps at the same time, even. So it goes without saying that she had to held down the position of main healer for my team. And she did it flawlessly. And that only got even better after I awakened her, where the moment I drop her down on the field of battle, she heals everybody on the field. This allowed our team to survive, even should shit unexpectedly hit the fan. Put it down, heals everybody, we can continue on fighting. So, we gotta get props. Freaking healer appreciation day all around, boyos. And Iris definitely deserves the mantle of the main healer in my harem. Number 4. Katie. Ah, the gold level soldier that we got after completing the drill missions at the beginning of the game. I'm not really sure as to which waifu has the most time deployed on the field, but I'm pretty sure Katie is way, way up there. Hell, I'm willing to go as far as to say that she has the most time deployed out of all the other waifus in my harem. Now believe me, there are plenty of reasons as to why that is. First things first, she is a soldier, and as such, her skill is called reinforcements, where she increases our unit points by 15. This allows us to quickly place down other units on the field of battle as well. Secondly, her defense stats are pretty high, and once awakened, she can block up to 3 units, which means she is very good as an off-tank, able to hold the front line damn near the start of every mission. And finally, once awakened, she gains a passive ability that buffs her defense as well as the defense of everybody deployed by 2%. This making the entire team able to take a whole lot more damage and last longer in a fight. So with her being one of the most versatile heroes in my harem, as well as a touch of sass, to put it bluntly, our army is beginning to slack off. Well, fuck you too, freaking Katie, come on now. Katie is definitely worthy of the number four spot on my list, let me tell ya. Number three. Saki. Ah, our little Sundari Shinobi. I was able to get her from the trading post. She was my very first black unit in my harem. And as such, I utilized her right from the get-go. I mean, when I first got her, she had a mediocre position on the team. And then I awakened her, and, well, she still had her mediocre spot in the harem. 
And then I awakened her skill, and she quickly rose to the ranks of my most lethal waifu in my harem. Wait, no, 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 oh, oh, oh. Yes, that's what I like to see. This is what I like to see. Not only did this increase her range, not only did she gain the ability to throw three shurikens, but each of these shurikens had the potential of one-shotting anybody. Waves upon waves of enemies both weak and strong were utterly wiped out by this one little shinobi girl right here. And I'm absolutely not gonna lie, but she is the sole reason as to why I was able to get 500 kills on the first try in Katie's war games. Who, 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 who? Being extremely sexy, extremely tsundere, and above all, extremely deadly, Saki is more than deserving of the number three spot on my list. Number two. Spica. Now before I begin, I'm just gonna give you a little side by side right here, right here, okay, you see it, you see it, take it in, take it in, take it in. Good, moving on. Much like Saki, Spica is another heroine I was able to get from the training post, and as such, she started her career in my harem rather early. But what sets her apart though is that she was able to solidify her position as a primary damage dealer almost instantly once I got her. This gave her ample time to grow and really develop as a damage dealer in my harem. And I'm not really sure because it was that long ago, but she very well could have been my first awakened unit on top of that. And sometime after being awakened, she eventually reached max level. And the moment that happened, she solidified her position as the primary damage dealer in my harem. Being both very cheap and very powerful, she was usually deployed at the start of each mission so that she could bring in the pain rain in the form of volleys and volleys of arrows. And on top of that, once she was awakened, she was given a buff that boosts the attack of every archer that was deployed by 7%. This makes her extremely compatible with Bashira as the two would form a very deadly wall of arrows whenever the both of them are deployed at once. And by God, does she tug at my heartstrings by being another member of the Sundari train. And being the sassy elven archer Sundari that she is, she tends to do whatever the fuck she wants on a mission. There are times when she is absolutely on point. Oh, oh, this is cheap. I can just shoot him right there. Boom, slap him, slap him, don't let him. Shit, no, oh, okay. whew. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. <laughs> oh fuck, fuck, Spica, I love ya! And other times, well... No, not them, leave them alone. I want to get rid of these guys. Spica, Nazgul, over here! You are no man, we can take him out! What the? Hey, take, get rid of him, please get rid of him. No! Stop, leave him alone! A beautiful design, a fantastic personality, and extremely effective on the fields of battle. An elven archer of such quality that she puts Legolas, as well as every elven archer from World of Warcraft, to shame. There's not much more to say about Spica other than the fact that she made this trip all that much more rememberable, and I am absolutely gonna miss her in the translated version. And finally, the number one waifu of Millennium War Aegis is... Do I really have to say it? Do you really not know who took the number one spot on this list? Alright, boys and puppets, say it with me. All together now. Three, two, one, Anna. Ah, our little secretary. The waifu that was there from the very beginning. We jumped into Millennium War Aegis. She was the very first person to greet us. From the first day to the last day, she was nowhere else other than at our side. Through every event, through every mission, she was there being our right hand girl. And it's just a shame that we were able to finally get her into the harem so late into our Millennium War Aegis career. It was too short lived. We were able to make her a waifu and she had to leave us almost immediately after after everything she'd done for us. I mean, there was not a woman in the harem that freaking busted her ass more than Anna did. She kept this game going. She kept the story going. She kept each and every one of the events fresh. She spoke the lines of dialogue in our stead because, you know, we were the silent protagonists and we can't say jack shit. Subordinates. 
dot 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 the typical anime protagonist dot 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 then we turn to your empire and tell them the kingdom has no intentions of fighting we left that up to anna oh my goodness anna seriously i'm just gonna flat out say it you are the waifu that made millennial agus not just for me but for everybody I'm pretty sure I'm not the only player of Millennium War Aegis who ranks Ana as number one on their waifu list. I'm pretty sure there's a shit ton of players that rank her at number one. Because she is that good. Ana, you are that good. You made Millennium War Aegis. You made Millennium War Aegis such a rememberable trip for me, as well as hundreds of others who play this game. Ana, for that, you are my absolute favorite waifu of Millennium War Aegis, and I proudly give you the number one spot on my waifus of Millennium War Aegis list. Don't ever change, Papa. Don't ever change. I love you, Prince. <laughs> And there you have it, boils and puppets. Big Phil's top 15 Millennium War Aegis waifus. And I'm sorry for this list coming out so late. My laptop cut a bug and I lost a whole lot of data and I pretty much had to stop from scratch after all the hard work I put into it. But hey, here is the end result and I am pretty proud of it. Now I know that my list differentiates from all of your lists mainly because I didn't get the chance to see all the waifus because of my extreme lack of luck in the Shrine Summons. But if there's a waifu that you think deserves to be on a list, on your list, on my list, leave them down in the comment section below and say why you love that Millennium War Aegis waifu. Mention one waifu. Mention the whole list. Show some love to the waifus that made Millennium War Aegis such an enjoyable game. And as I said before, Though Millennium War Aegis on Otaku.net is done, but there's still always DMM. Give me a couple weeks to work out some things on my end, and hopefully you'll be able to see me continuing Millennium War Aegis on DMM. Because I enjoy that game, I know how to play that game, and I want to continue with my Millennium War Aegis playlist. So give me a couple weeks to work out some things on my end, and hopefully I can keep the playlist going. So that concludes my top 15 Millennium War Aegis waifus list. I mean, that little shout out to Nutaku.net for providing us with a translated version of the game. A little shout out for them. Because they, it was, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have the opportunity to play this game. So with all that being said, I'll leave it off at that. I really hope you enjoyed my list. So boyos and puppets, y'all have a beautiful day. Be sure to behave yourselves, and if you decide to misbehave, be sure to invite me because I am bored and I need something fun to do. Carry on!